Howdy folks, today we're going to look at the Magnus Effect. That's when you throw an object with spin and it takes a curved path. There are plenty of videos that show that it happens, but none that offer what I consider a good explanation of why or how it happens. We're going to visualize it today, so let's get to it. Our visual aid is going to be a simulation of the object and the air so we can see what's going on here. First we have the air, which we'll simulate as bouncy balls. You can think of these as the air molecules. For the actually people that are watching, yes in reality it's a little bit more complicated, but for this discussion it works just fine so we'll just go with it. The next thing is collisions. When two things bounce off of each other, the force is along the line connecting the two centers. So, to push something this way, you have to collide with it here. To push it that way, you have to collide there. Finally, we have our ball or cylinder that's flying through the air. We can think of the surface as a little bit sticky or as having tiny little fins on it like a paddle wheel, so that when it's spinning, it also pushes any colliding air in the spinning direction too. The ball will be pushed by each air molecule that bounces into it, and the average of all of these is what determines whatever direction it's pushed. This average is shown by the lines coming out of the center. One is the forces acting in the last few seconds, and the other more stable line is a longer term average of those forces. Now with a non-spinning ball, we can see that most of the collisions happen in the front against oncoming air. The yellow shows which ones have hit the ball. There are a few collisions on the back, but they're also much slower. The top and bottom are also being hit sometimes, but one is just as much as the other. So there's a symmetry here, and it's not being pushed in either direction. Overall, you can see that the sum of all of these is pushing backward on the ball, but neither up nor down. Now if we spin the ball as it travels through the air, something different happens. The air hitting each part is also pushed in a clockwise direction. At first it might seem like this shouldn't result in an upward movement, but watch where the collisions are happening. The hardest and fastest are on the bottom part of the front. The top part of the front is not getting hit as much because the air from below is being launched out in front of it to form a sort of shield that slows down the incoming air before it can hit the ball. This means that more of the force on the ball is coming from the lower part, meaning it's being pushed upward, and we have the Magnus Effect. Now it might seem at first that there's some cheating going on here. If the air is being pushed upward from the bottom front, wouldn't the equal and opposite reaction also be pushing the ball downward? Well, the answer is that the force pushing the air upward is coming from the ball's spin, and the equal and opposite reaction is not to push the ball downward, but to slow the ball's spin. It's pushing downward on the front of the ball, not the entire ball. Think about a motionless ball spinning in the air. It'll still throw any colliding air in the spin direction, but the counterforce acting on it is just slowing down its spin. Now that we can see the effects on this level, we can take this to a more abstract level. By looking at one little area and adding up all the speed and direction of air molecules passing through this area, we'll turn this into a single line to represent that average. Looking at it this way helps to see how what's happening on the smaller scale translates into the larger scale. And that's it for this time. I hope this made it easier and more fun. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful, leave a like or a comment or subscribe. You can also leave a tip using the thanks button. Thanks for watching and see you next time.